three. Mm. Number one, what else is number one? Cardiology and heart surgery, number one. Is that what you're doing here today? Treg is just here playing in the lobby because we are waiting to be called back into a room to verify Treg's name, date of birth, and everything going on with the medical procedure. Thank you, baby. <laughs> then they let us go back into the room where they kept all the cribs for uh, the younger patients having surgery. Uh, this is the crib that they wheeled him back in for the procedure. Um, and they gave him what they called like a little baby margarita type of sedative to calm him down so he wouldn't be worried when they wheeled him back and it worked great. He was really peaceful and smiling as they wheeled him back for the surgery. Right after that, Jordan and I went into the parents' waiting room and we uh, just continually checked this app that we downloaded that the nurses who were in the procedure updated and sent texts. We realized at this point why it had taken so long for a nurse to come in and why they had to update us in the consultation room um, was because Treg had some complications during his surgery and what would have been the end of his surgery at that time around two, a four hour surgery, was going to take about double that time, eight hours, because they had taken him off the bypass machine and done an echo and realized that Treg um, still had another hole in his heart that they had to repair. So they put him back on bypass and began another Good, surgery. Uh, yeah. Um, but the, uh, the battle was um, a little unusual. Um, the, uh, the shape of the valve we tried to repair was a little bit unusual, so it was a little bit more challenging. Okay. So uh, it took time, but the finally um, we were able to uh, just mild beating, which is better. Okay. And the um, right, so that's a left side valve. The right side of the valve, uh, almost no leaking, so Great. very good. And the heart is working well. Great. So he's stable. Um, yeah. So you know we did discuss, for example, some uh, other issues, potential issues like, for example, uh, arrhythmia, the heart block, but we we didn't see this type of problem. Okay, okay. great. So uh, so far so good. So after Trig's surgery, um, we waited in the waiting room for about another hour while they got him situated in his ICU room. Uh, at that time, we were able to come in, and as soon as we walked in, we noticed a lot of doctors and nurses in the room. Uh, that was because Treg had to be put on external pacemakers. His heart could not keep a normal rhythm, and he actually went into heart block immediately after surgery. So those pacemakers were in to help his heart uh, keep rhythm. People with Down syndrome tend to metabolize medication faster than the typical person. So uh, Treg had maxed out on the pain meds he was allowed to have, but he still kept waking up and we didn't want him to be awake because he was still intubated and um, he could have really hurt himself and ripped it out. So Every hour we were pinning him down, trying to find a solution, and we ended up just having to medically uh, paralyze him so that he wouldn't stir and hurt himself.
although the doctor said Trig might be extubated the day that he got out of surgery, it took us until night three. That is when they extubated him and they placed an oxygen mask on his face because he was still in and out of sleep quite a bit. Uh, right when they excavated him, they said I was allowed to hold him, so I did, and, um, immediately he lost all color in his face, um, he was in too much pain to still be held, so although he was excavated, uh, we decided to not hold him quite yet until he was a little more, um, awake. Early morning on day four, I noticed that Trake was trying to wake up. He was trying to uh, look around. I noticed he had tried to make eye contact with me, which was the first time he had made an attempt at eye contact since surgery. And I thought maybe he was having problems because the mask was blowing oxygen into his eyes. So I asked if he could be placed with a nasal cannula and so we went ahead and tried it, and immediately he uh, woke up and was ready to be held. Um, I want to know what's happening with the rhythm okay. before we make a decision on that. Okay. But yeah, I'm just wondering for us. Yeah, no, no, but I yeah. think you can't help block it in terms of like we're not planning to really leave any um, IV meds. So. <laughs> um, IV wise, we're on step is only. We did eight Um and then heme what counts eleven, hemoglobin's eleven, so it's like one six one. Um so I mean I think overall big picture, uh, he's doing well, he's progressing nicely. I think we're just gonna try to get everything out of him and off of him as we can today. So our arterial line's already out, hopefully we can get the nasal cannula out and also hopefully we can get that line in his neck out as well. But we're just gonna touch base with us. Day four was great. Trey sat up, Trey took liquids and he even ate a little bit of food. So the morning of day five, they brought in a physical therapist and uh, tried to get Trey to get moving and start to walk around. He was throwing up that day from what we found out in the future was a blockage from medication. So he was sick in this clip. He was still kind of having withdrawals from medication and he just wasn't himself. So it didn't go as great as it could have, but we are still so proud of him. Here? Can you sing for me? Uh -huh. <laughs> don't make me. <laughs> the next day, Treg seemed to completely be like himself again. He was happy, laughing, smiling. He was jibber jabbering. He was signing. He was eating and so we decided to try to take him on a walk and he did great he was excited to be moving around yeah you got it come on dude come on yay yeah good job are you so proud come on keep going keep going can you walk? Oh, you waving? You're trying to make friends? That's great. Oh, good job. Oh. Come on. Good job. Out there, huh? New world with a big heart. New heart, new world, huh? Yeah. <laughs> So at this point, he is almost back to himself. He's still in a little bit of pain. It is hard to give him pain medication, but for the most part, he's ready to roll. And so we are just ready to go home and get back to our normal life. We had been there um, at this point longer than they said we should expect to be there. So we were ready to break out. So at this point, we are ready to go home. The doctor has said we just need to do a final echo and x-ray to make sure Treg's looking good and we can start getting ready for discharge. This is when Treg's cardiology team came to us and said that Treg has a lot more fluid around his heart than should be expected and we have the choice to either 
wait it out and give him an IV with his meds to see if the stronger dosage helps or to go in and have another surgery that night and have them put in a pericardial window. So we were just done with surgery. We didn't want to have to put him through that after he just started to recover. So we decided to wait and see how it would go. So in the meantime, we are just trying to keep him entertained. We're doing all the things that we can think of to keep him happy. I don't know why daddy gets to be the good guy. Right? He <laughs> has to be the disciplinarian. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> yes, it does. Oh, daddy, that's how it works. That's how it that's works. That's our debate, Ben. Can you bang, bang the drum? Finally, after about a week of his fluids going down every day and each x-ray and echo coming back better and better, they decided that Trey could go home. Can you say bye-bye, hospital? for watching guys don't forget to subscribe like comment hit the notification bell let me know how you guys found us did you come from instagram uh, we can't wait to connect with you guys and we'll see you next time